Hi, and welcome to this short context bite where we see the Gibbs free energy in action and examine the factors which affect our Gibbs free energy, or if we look more deeply, factors which affect the spontaneity of a reaction. The Gibbs equation makes it fairly clear that the Gibbs free energy depends upon the thermodynamic temperature. This works in two ways. We've already seen the temperature dependence of both enthalpy and entropy earlier in the course, but temperature also directly affects the Gibbs free energy. We can see this if we actually look at how the Gibbs energy changes as a function of temperature. To simplify this slightly, I assume that both delta H and delta S are reasonably constant over the temperature range shown. From our Gibbs equation, we see that the gradient of a plot of delta G against T has a gradient of minus delta S. If a reaction is endothermic, delta H is positive, then the reaction will be spontaneous at high temperature if the entropy change is also positive. But at lower temperatures, delta G will be positive and the reaction will not occur spontaneously. If the reaction is endothermic with a negative entropy change, it will never be spontaneous, but you can make this reaction occur if work is done on the system. For exothermic reactions, where the enthalpy change is negative, we can again have positive entropy changes, and in this case, these reactions are spontaneous at all temperatures. Finally, we have exothermic reactions with negative entropy changes, which are spontaneous only at low temperatures. Remember, when we are talking about spontaneous reactions, it is the thermodynamics that matters and has nothing to do with the kinetics of the process. The following derivation is going to show what other factors can affect the Gibbs free energy. I do not expect you to be able to repeat independently this derivation, but the end result is important. If we look at the Gibbs energy for absolute values rather than differences as we usually do, we can say G is equal to H minus TS. And by knowing the relationship between enthalpy and internal energy, then G is equal to H minus TS plus PV. Now, we can take the differential form of this equation. For each multiplicative term, we need to have two different terms when taking the differential form. So, for TS, we end up with TDS and SDT. In other words, we can look at how the Gibbs changes with temperature as entropy is kept constant, or how the Gibbs changes with entropy as temperature is kept constant. The same is true of the PV term, where we end up with two terms, PDV and VDP. Now, going back to our definition of the first law and the second law, I have relationships for U, internal energy, S, entropy, and W, work. Substituting into our differential expression for Gibbs and cancelling, we end up with an expression that says the Gibbs free energy changes with two things, the temperature and pressure. We've already seen how Gibbs changes with temperature, but it must also depend upon pressure. This is again something we have already seen in phase diagrams. The reason any state is the most stable at any given temperature and pressure is because the Gibbs free energy is lowest for that particular state. We will see more about phase diagrams and phase equilibria and how pressure and temperature affect the stable phase near phase boundaries later in this course. I hope that you have found this video interesting and informative. Gibbs free energy tells us if any process is spontaneous and we now know that we can affect the value of Gibbs free energy by changing just two things, the temperature and the pressure. If you have any questions about this or any other video, please do not hesitate to ask.